Well, I haven't done a update on the aquaponics greenhouse lately, so let's walk inside and see what's going on. I've got a few things that are new that I'm trying out, and it seems to be working out pretty well. There's like a jungle in here. This is the um, Nasturtium officinale watercress that we're growing here. And it does so well that I doubt that I'll ever grow lettuce again. This stuff is just, uh, it's great. Okay. Over here we have the, uh, our original tomato plant and, uh, it is grown huge. We've got uh, a lot of new tomatoes in here that are coming on. This thing just keeps producing. And for our older growth, we've got. red tomatoes coming on down here. I picked several yesterday. The um, cabbage is doing well. And then here's some more watercress in the back. This is our 55 gallon fish tank. Let's see how these guys are doing today. Are you guys hungry? Well, I guess they are. Started out doing uh, hydroponics outside and I had some really good results with that, but I had to change the water every two weeks and uh, the chemicals were expensive. and. Uh, these fish seem to be doing the same job and I never have to uh, change the water and I don't have to buy expensive chemicals so this is working out quite well this filter started out as being a uh, radio flow filter <clears throat> and uh, I was getting too many particulates in the water, so I changed it over and uh, to where the water would swirl and I made a swirl filter out of this. Now the swirl filter is working out much better than the uh, radio flow filter did. And if I want to get the small particulates out of the water, I just... Uh, put this little kid's swimming pool filter in here for a couple hours a day and it takes all the small particulates out of the water also so this filter seems to be working out pretty well um, you'll notice down there there's a, a valve and a pipe that goes to the outside when I clean this filter out get the solids out of it it runs into a, a little tank outside that I've got that I just uh, take the water out of and then I put all the solids in the wicking beds keep up fertility in the nose. The last time I did one of these I had nothing over here except this was kind of my junk corner. And since then we've moved in some more Dutch buckets these tomatoes here are clones off of the original big plant and uh, they're already put on set fruit now we have a few little tomatoes down in there 
already. So that's working out really well. Up here, uh, we have a nutrient film manifold that I made out of three inch uh, drain pipe. And we're running uh, nutrient into each of the stations on this. This is all planted with um, strawberries. Uh, the ones that you see right there. Those I planted yesterday. I just got those in the mail. And uh, these are supposed to be day neutral strawberries which produce all year. So we'll see how they work out. When I put this together I uh, had one little strawberry plant that I managed to chip out of this ice back uh, in the garden and uh, put that in there. It had four leaves on it when I first put it in here. And it's, um, we've got strawberries on it now. I believe that's a Quinault strawberry. Now, uh, fertilize, uh, I uh, pollinate these the same way that I pollinate the tomatoes. Got a little electric toothbrush here. And I just give them a good shake. And that's working out pretty well. Of course these little tomatoes get a good shake every once in a while too. I had no pollination problems doing it this way. Well, this is the latest bucket that I put in with another clone in it. Um, I feed these with uh, drip tubing. Okay, three-quarter inch drip tubing with uh, uh, quarter inch lines coming off of it. Now on the, to get a good flow I take a 764 drill bit and drill out the barbs that I put in uh, to the main line and uh, clean those up really good and if I do that I get a really good flow out of the tubes into the beds like this. Another thing that helps is that if you run your supply line overhead and then run your tubes down into your media you get a little siphoning effect and it makes for a, a lot better flow into the plants into the to the beds here and uh, right here I have another little clone that uh, I pinched off this morning that will root and uh, and make another tomato plant so uh, I've had no problems at all rooting anything in this uh, perlite. Um, you see on the bucket here this is a, a five gallon paint filled uh, strainer. I buy these at Home Depot and I put those in the bucket and that keeps the perlite out of the system from stopping things up does an excellent job. So uh, the perlite gets replaced once a year and it's cheap. And over here, let's see. Okay, I don't know. Here's a little cloned uh, celery plant that uh, I put in and it's uh, it's already rooted and doing really, really well, so I'm going to grow some more celery out of this one. Um, I've learned a few things about uh, since I started with uh, the aquaponics out here. And uh, it's just little things tweaking the system that, uh, that really make it work much better. Uh, the part about uh, doing lines overhead and, uh, and drilling out the barbs. That was one thing that uh, worked out really well. Changing the uh, 
radio flow filter to a swirl filter has helped immensely and um, it's about 20 degrees outside today uh, really cold a lot of ice in here we're sitting on about 70 degrees which is um, the uh, the fish tank is about 80 degrees and it uh, heats the inside of this little greenhouse pretty well. We've got, uh, there's going to be another manifold that's going to go over this empty space that I've got above the fish tank. And, um, but so far, uh, this has worked out extremely well. We've had tomatoes all winter long and that's worked out really well for me. Because I love tomatoes. And so here's just a little picture of all the tomatoes we have. We have 